Hello, how are you doing? I uh, hope your day has been great. Um, my day has been okay as well. And um, today I'm looking forward to looking, uh, I'm actually, today I'm looking forward to discussing about uh, if we are really living in the last days because uh, many people are asking, are we in the last days for sure? Are these the things that you've been seeing in the book of Revelation? Are we there? Are we, are, are we there? Like, or are there some things which are yet to be done? Are there some things which uh, we are yet to see so that, um, or is a rapture imminent? You see, imminent means there is almost, there's nothing else which is remaining. Are we, are we there exactly? Uh, this is uh, quite important today to speak about because, uh, Many people are still mixed up and they're still asking, what else is remaining? What else is remaining? How can we prove that we're in the last days? Or is it just some, you know, some people are just crazy and saying these are the last days and maybe probably we still have a hundred or 200 years or we have, you, you see people are saying everything. Some are saying probably we don't, we, we, we have more time and, um, we're just getting excited for nothing. So uh, today I just want us to look very well and uh, we'll be able to observe because um, the Bible tells us to uh, test everything and to watch everything and to see, is it really true? And of course, uh, how we can know something is true is uh, from for going into the Bible and being able to see uh, exactly what the Bible says concerning each and every event. You see, the Bible... Uh, is written for us to learn, but not everything is to us because uh, some things you'll find they are written to some other different people, but almost everything in the Bible, not even almost everything in the Bible is for us to learn something. For example, there, there was a guy called Noah who God uh, told uh, to go and build an ark. That's not a message to us. Right now, we're not supposed to go and build arcs, but uh, it is for us to learn what happened and how it colorates with the time of today. And um, God also commanded another man to go and sacrifice his son. And we see that's not our message today, but it also reflects something that uh, is to come on our age. So when we check the whole Bible, we should basically do something called, we should check our dispensation. Where exactly are we in the Bible? Where are we? Okay, because it's very important to understand where you are. If you go in a mall and it's really huge, you'll always check and ask yourself, where exactly am I in that mall? Uh, so you can see the direction and you can get them up. So right now, as we speak, we are in the time frame of the Apostle Paul that is in the church age, okay? And being in the church age, there are so many things which have been spoken. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, discussed about this and he said uh, how it will be during these times. So we need to be very much uh, open-minded so that we can understand what uh, the Bible is talking about. So uh, today we want to speak um, about are we really living in the last days? That's our topic today. And I will give you about 11 biblical proofs that we are living in the last days. And uh, this one, this information, you can do with it whatever you want to do, because you see everything is it's put out there. It's for you to make a constant, understandable choice by yourself and be able to ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I there or am I doing what is supposed to be done? So uh, number one, the first thing that we will analyze and see is that uh, the Bible says, it said in the last days, uh, so many false prophets, uh, I mean, false Christs will emerge. You see, a Christ is an anointed person, an anointed one, the anointed one. So there are so many people will come up and say they are anointed and you see, I'm the Christ, I'm the Christ here. And uh, they will deceive many. Okay, and uh, of course, before even I go to the Bible, they are we are already seeing this one happening. Just the other day in Russia, there is one of the Christs. Uh, he was saying that is the Christ who was arrested. Uh, he was uh, having a big cult. There is another one in Philippines. There is also another one who was here in Kenya, calling himself uh, Jehovah Wanyonyi. There are so many people who are 
I've been saying they are Christ over and over and over again. When you just go to YouTube and just type, uh, you know, uh, Christ, this and that has been seen somewhere. You will see so many of those uh, false Christs um, mentioning themselves. And uh, so that one already tells us that is a proof that we are living in the last days because the Bible tells us in the book of um, in the book of Matthew, Matthew 24, uh, verse 4 to 5, it, it tells us about this uh, false Christ. It says, um, Matthew 24, verse 4 to 5, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So you see, so many people will come up and say, I'm Christ this, I'm Christ that, I'm the anointed one, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Savior. And uh, we are seeing this one happening. So that one already tells us that we are living in the last days. And of course, uh, another thing that can tell us that we are living in the last days is the wars and rumors of wars. Have you seen this one happening? Let's first go to the Bible verse which talks about this. Uh, Matthew 24, verse uh, 6, it says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. All right? You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the Bible says there will be wars and rumors of wars. But uh, when uh, the, the time of the end is almost, and uh, right now, as we as we see um, how the world is going on, we see, uh, like for example, in Israel, there is a lot of a lot of rumors of war. Syria wants to, you know, fight with Israel. We see also um, Russia is coming there to, I don't know, also Turkey is also wanting to attack Israel. We see uh, China is, uh, you know, they have troubles with India, US, with Russia. We see all, all these kind of things. And there are a lot of wars and rumors of wars and some people fighting these. You see, all these things have been mentioned in the Bible that there will be a lot of wars and rumors of wars and things like that. So the Bible is very clear and it tells us when you start hearing those kind of things, wars, rumors of wars and people fighting and, you know, uh, things like that, then understand that the end is almost near. And number three, nation will rise against nation, okay? A whole nation will rise against nation. You see on the wars and rumors of wars, it will not only just be a nation, even people will be fighting within themselves. Have you seen what is happening in Syria? Have you seen uh, most of these Islamic uh, states, what they are doing? They are fighting within themselves. So uh, it's both wars and rumors of wars, both in different nations and also within themselves. But also now this, which one I want to say is nations will rise against nations, kingdoms and kingdoms. Again, as kingdoms, also famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. Those are some of the things that Jesus said that they will happen in the last day. So we can check this one in Matthew 24, 7 to 8. It says, uh, for nations shall rise against nation. We are seeing this one already happening. Nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Famines. Are you seeing how people are dying of hunger lately? Uh, a, a lot of places, especially in North Africa, people are really, really dying of hunger. Even here in Kenya, uh, when we see Trukana, we see different places. People are really dying of hunger. You see somebody is just so thin until he dies because there's no food, famine. So the Bible is very clear about this. And it says that... Um, there shall be famines and pestilences. Pestilences is what? A pestilence is a, 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 some plague or some kind of disease, which more so is considered to have been, you know, has been sent by God as a punishment or something. The, a, a wide range, a, a, um, a very high spreading kind of disease, like what you're seeing right now. That is a pestilence. That is a pestilence. So, uh, the Bible has said these pestilences will be there. And we are seeing one pestilence right now, which is uh, going on a global scale, which has never happened like this. We have had many, many other pestilences, small, small, e Ebola, Zika, and all those. But it has never been this big, like the way we are seeing right now and where the world is at standstill. So that is uh, already another sign telling us that, uh, you know, we are in the last days. And earthquakes, have you gone and seen how many earthquakes right now are happening? Earthquakes are so, 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 so many, meaning that this is a biblical thing. But you see, most people, they say, oh, there's climate change. They say this and that. And then many people try to, you know, dilute this. And they say, you see, it's just climate change. Have you seen the things that they spray on the skies nowadays? And they are really, you, have you ever seen some planes? Eh? 
a, um, a, a plane which is going like spraying something on the sky. Have you ever seen something like that? And you really wonder what is this? These guys, they, they, they're just uh, destroying the atmosphere. They are trying to change the climate and do some weird things out there. And these things are bring a lot of... Uh, diseases and the famines and all the, I wonder these people are just after uh, finishing people and killing people so we have to be very very careful about this and uh, we have to open up our minds so that we can understand what is happening and what is coming as well so um where the bible says that there will be earthquakes in diverse places so earthquakes are also another big big sign of uh, the end of days back in the days 1990s and 80s there were no much earthquakes but all of a sudden in the 21st century we are having so many earthquakes like if you check in the news almost every day there's an earthquake and um, some of them are really of great magnitudes and uh, like some of them which are, are, have been happening in the in the ocean which are causing tsunamis and they are causing uh, those kind of big tremors and people dying Th these are things which are were not seeing back in the days and the bible says when you start seeing these, these things understand that the end is almost uh, near we are towards the end of age uh, and number four we see that uh, Christians will not endure sound doctrine. This is another proof that uh, we are living in the last days. Christians will not endure sound doctrine. You will be fought by people when you try to tell them that they should repent, that they are living in sin. Uh, you'll be seen like, uh, this guy is confused, and why is he telling us about sin? We don't really care. Just tell us uh, some sweet nothings. This is going to happen in the last days. The Bible has already said this, and it has confirmed that these are some of the signs of uh, the end of age. So let's go to 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1, uh, it, it says 4 verse 1 uh, to around 5. It tells us about what will be happening. People not enduring anything, not enduring sound doctrine. They will not want anything to do with the truth. They will want some lies. Now, 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 to, uh, to 5, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing uh, and his kingdom. So who are the quick? our bodies, we will be quickened. You know, we are told that the Holy Spirit will quicken our mortal bodies. He will change them, okay? So quickening, it basically means he will change us, okay? So those will be alive when Jesus comes uh, comes to pick us at the rapture. If you're alive, you're, you will be quickened. So, so here Paul is trying to say that uh, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick, the ones who are alive who will be quickened and the dead who will have died and then they rise up to go to the judgment seat of Christ and, and the dead at his appearing in his uh, and his kingdom. Preach the word. Now Paul is telling us what we should do right now. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So Paul is trying to tell us, guys, don't just sit down there and just say it is all well, everything is okay. Uh, you know, don't touch the anointed, don't touch the anointed. He says that uh, whenever you see something is not biblical, when you see something is not going in the way of the truth, please rebuke with all, you know, uh, rebuke with all long suffering. He says, preach the word, always be preaching to people. If you're in a matatu, you're in a bus, you're somewhere, just always wake up and preach to people because you never know who is listening out there. And you never know. You are the only person probably who has ever told them the truth. Uh, that is one thing that Paul is trying to tell us, that we be instant in season and out of season, that we should also reprove reprove. We should rebuke. You see, rebuking. You can rebuke someone with the word of God. Remember how Jesus rebuked Satan when Je Satan was trying to tempt Jesus. What did Jesus say? He did not say, no, it's okay. Me, I don't want to be informed. No, Jesus said he rebuked uh, Satan uh, by using the word of God. He said, uh, it is written. It is written. You shall worship God alone. Get thee behind me, Satan. You see? So Jesus rebuked Satan uh, using the word of God. Remember also when uh, Peter, si uh, Simon Peter wanted uh, uh, to, to say that, you know, 
he was saying that oh these people they want to kill the messiah and all that you understand how how, how the whole story came up and peter is like he wanted to you know make jesus not go to the cross and what did jesus say he rebuked peter and he said get thee behind me satan why did he say that he did not really mean peter was satan he said the thing which was in him which was satan trying to uh, or maybe Satan was trying to give some, you know, some uh, stories in his mind and tell him, no, Jesus should not go at the cross. That was a plan of the enemy because the enemy did not want that to happen because that could have meant there is no redemption. So he said, get thee behind me, Satan. You see, you can rebuke using the word of God, okay? You can rebuke using the word of God. And uh, exalt, exalting someone. You can exalt someone using the word of God. You, you tell them what the promises of the Bible says and things like that. Now, verse three talks about what will really be happening. Christ, people not enduring sound doctrine. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Are you seeing that time right now when people don't endure sound doctrine? They don't want the truth, okay? But after their own lusts, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So people will be uh, heaping themselves some teachers who, uh, who have, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, tell us what we want to hear. We don't want to hear the truth. Tell us how we will be rich, how we'll be buying new cars, how we'll be this and this and this, how we'll never be sick, how we'll never be have a bad life. You see, tell us those things. We don't want, look at uh, churches which uh, people preach prosperity. They're always full. Why? Because that is exactly what people want to hear. They want to hear how, tell us how we'll be successful. It doesn't really matter if we are sinners or not. Just tell us we'll be successful. Just tell us God, God loves us despite us continuing sinning and never um, coming into repentance and never changing our mind, never getting saved. Just tell us that Jesus loves us and we'll go to heaven. We don't really care about anything else. That is exactly what the Bible says here, that people will endure sound, will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap themselves some teachers telling them what their itching ears want to hear. If you see most of the mega churches, most of them, they are just telling people uh, happy stories. But, uh, and no wonder, have you ever realized that most of these mega big churches, prosperity churches, they never allow another preacher to come and uh, preach, someone who is a bit sober and someone who really understands the gospel. They just want the people of the same caliber. So when you see these prosperity churches, most of the people who teach there and who are called as, you know, uh, a welcomed minister, he'll always behave like the same guy uh, because they, they want the same doctrine. They want the, the same, you know, the doctrines of devils, the, those lies to continue. And that's why it's very, very important for you to know that uh, you should not be like them. Don't be like them. There's no need of you wasting time in church. Uh, and at the end of the day, you go to hell. So it will have even be better just do whatever you can do and continue with your life instead of wasting time in church and then you gain nothing. Verse 4 says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. <laughs> so in the last days, people will turn away from the truth and turn into fables. They'll be just, you know, they, they just want stories, nothing. Yeah? But to watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work on a, of an evangelist, make, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, Paul is saying, don't worry about these people. Don't worry about what they are doing. Don't worry about their lives. Don't worry about uh, if they, they, they want uh, some lies or what. You just do, endure, do the work of an evangelist. Make proof of your ministry. Because you see, when, when you're doing preaching, you're, you're not doing it for the masses. Uh, even if you have um, maybe two, three, four people at home that you preach to and you tell them about the gospel, maybe at your workplace, it doesn't really matter if there are two or three. What if God called you only for two people? So are you going to say, because I don't have a big crowd like, uh, you know, Reynard Bonke or Maurice Rulo or whichever other person, uh, I think my message is small. Remember the, ta uh, the, the parable of talents, the parable of the talents. Jesus explains very well how somebody was given two talents, three talents, four talents, five talents and all that. So he gives that uh, out of his own will and he knows why he's giving like that so don't worry about what people are saying maybe i, I have a small crowd i have a big crowd no do your work make proof of your ministry that is exactly what the bible is saying so uh, people will not be enduring sound doctrine in the last days and we are seeing this one happening let's also see in second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 
um, verse 16, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Do you know that? All scripture, everything, scripture is everything in the Bible, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So you can use every word in this Bible to correct, to reproof, to instruct, you know, all those kind of things in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, and to all good works. So if somebody is going out of the way of the true doctrine, you can rebuke him using this Bible. You can correct him using this Bible. You can reprove him using the Bible because it is written so that the, the, so that, uh, the man of God, the person who says that he's a believer of God, may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works so that he can produce fruit. Uh, being furnished unto, uh, you know, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works means so that he can produce a good fruit. Because the Bible says, if you don't produce fruit, then what are you going to earn in heaven? Because in heaven, there's an inheritance. There's the rewards in heaven, which you'll be getting. So there's nothing as bad as having been in church all through, done all the things that you've done, and in heaven, you get no reward. People will be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. So do as much as you can preach to other people and uh, let them also be furnished and be cleaned up. When you see your brother is doing something which is wrong, tell them using the Bible, no brother, this is not true. This is not right. Tell them and explain to them so that they can be perfect and to good works which is uh, Christ ordained them uh, to do. You see, after we have been saved, we are supposed to do good works. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2.10 that uh, we are God's workmanship created unto good works, okay? So you're not created just to sit down and sleep. And now I am saved, let me just sleep and wait for the rapture. No, you should do good works. Uh, preach to other people, live by example, uh, touch those who have not uh, been touched with the gospel, do things because we are being created for this. Here where we are on earth, we're just pass us by and uh, we will be resting after we come out from this earth so that's the time that we should be resting right now we are working as much as we can and don't just indulge yourself with the uh, you know worldly things only you see people are only thinking about their business they're only thinking about uh, how i can make money how can I do this and that fine it is good to make money it is good to do these things but Jesus tells us in the Bible that uh, birds of the air, they don't work. Uh, lilies of the field, they don't work. Yet God uh, provides for them every day. Are you no more important? So Jesus says that seek ye the kingdom of God first and everything else I'll add up to you. So it doesn't mean that you don't go and work, but it means don't put working or the things of the world as if it's the main thing why you're living. You see, there, there are people who work until they die. They never get time to read the Bible. They never get time to even to speak to a brother about the gospel. And they think that I will accumulate too much for myself and then I'll be now safe. And then now I can come to the things of God. It's never that way. If that, that's why you work and work and work and it's all vanity because it's like you put your money in one pocket and then it, it's like the pocket has some holes. You never get enough because Satan wants to occupy you with a lot of things. You always think that I'm running after something, but there's always things like removing the money and you wonder, how comes this fella, this other guy who is so relaxed, he's eating, he's sleeping and he's doing different things, but he, now, he doesn't really go out and work so much like me. These are things which are spoken will be happening in the last days, okay? These are things I may even be showing you about that uh, aspect of people heaping a lot of treasure for themselves. Like, le let me get a lot of millions and put them in the bank because of the rainy days. You see, the world is always telling you that there, there are some rainy days which are coming, but God tells us he provides for us. And that's why he tells us that, Every day, pray for your daily bread. God has ways to provide for you. Remember the story of Elijah? El Elijah, what really happened? He was running away. He was running away from Jezebel and he didn't know what to do. And he went and just slept somewhere. And God provided for him manna, uh, food to eat and water to drink. And God will always provide for you as long as you seek his kingdom first. When you pray and you tell God, God, I am reading your word this week. Yes, I'll be working, but please provide 
me with food. Help me open up my mind. Let me be able to understand. God will help you. You will even see sometimes you're only doing two or three jobs and you have enough money for the whole week. And you, the, all the other time you're reading the Bible and preaching to other people. God, God tells us that he'll provide for our needs according to his riches in glory. He does not say he'll provide for our wants. You see, people are looking for wants more than uh, the needs. The needs, what are your needs? Food, shelter, and clothing. That is exactly what you need. Because if you have too much, think about about it if you have so many cars so many pieces of land so many this and this you'll even be you'll be hating heaven you'll be saying i can't live all these things but god tells us please don't focus on the worldly things focus on things above put your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy so don't keep yourself with the riches here and uh, forget that you're on an assignment forget that it's like you go to travel on a certain country a different country which is not uh, where you you you're born or things like that and then all that you need to do is that you want to buy so many things in that country, buy houses, buy cars, and you'll be like, what's wrong with me? Why am I investing here instead of investing at my home? This world is not your home. So don't be so much focused on the things of the world. And that's why even the apostles and even Jesus himself, they live by an example. They showed us what we should be doing. Jesus was, he did not have all those riches. The apostles, they did not have all those riches. Yes, the apostle Paul, for example, he was working. He was a tent maker. He was a lawyer. But we don't see a lot of his job activities. God provided it in his own ways. All that we see he was focusing on was the work of the ministry, the work of God trying to tell other people about the gospel. And God always provided for him. It's not that he was uh, sitting down and telling people, give me offerings, give me that. Paul himself, he says, these hands of mine, they work for me so that I'm not a burden to anyone. And I want to show you an example. So Paul was saying, it's not because I cannot ask for offerings, not because I cannot ask for tithes and all those things. But these hands of mine, they work for me so that I'm an example. So let's live by the example of Paul. Paul tells us that, hey, follow me for I am also following Christ. Okay, so don't sit down and say people will give me or this will happen. No, ask God for what is enough. Tell him to provide for you for your needs and then focus everything else on the heavenly things. And that's exactly what the Bible is telling us so that we may be able to focus on this thing. So number five. Uh, another another clue that we're really in the last days is that uh, scoffers who deny uh, scoffers will rise who will deny that Jesus is coming. Have you seen scoffers lately? Have you seen scoffers? <laughs> when I talk about scoffers, I'm talking about people who just uh, don't want to hear that Jesus is coming. They'll always be saying, ah, we had that in 2000. We had the world was ending. In 1988, the world was ending. This guy said Jesus was coming. This one said Jesus was coming. Even Paul himself was saying Jesus is coming. We had this in 2013, 2015. They will scoff and scoff and scoff and say that we don't care. We don't think that Jesus is coming anytime soon. I think he'll come after we are dead and uh, scoffers will come the bible has told us about this and when you see these scoffers look up because your redemption is drawing near and near you know you know for sure that jesus is about to come because of these scoffers you can see okay let's see second peter uh three verse three to four it says knowing this first listen what peter is saying knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers look in the last days, scoffers walking after their own lusts. Have you seen scoffers? They're walking after their own lusts. They don't, they, they're just saying, Keith, you're saying Jesus is coming. You're really a big fool. Hey, Jesus has always been saying that he's coming. He'll never be coming anytime soon. Those are scoffers. They make me to understand that, oh, this verse is true that Jesus is about to come because he told us in the last days there'll be scoffers. And verse four, it's saying, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You see, have you heard those words from people? People just say, since the fathers, you see our ancestors were saying Jesus is coming. Everybody was saying Jesus is coming. How are you sure that he's coming now? How are you sure all these things that you're hearing? Are you really sure that Jesus is going to come? Now, scoffers, when you see them, when you see these scoffers, Look up because your redemption is about to draw nigh, you see? And uh, <laughs> let's look at verse 10, verse 10 of the same chapter, chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Look at what it says. Um, actually, he, he says, uh, um, 
Oh, let me even start with verse eight. Look at this. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, why is, why is this verse in the Bible? Why is it saying that don't be ignorant about this, that to God one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. Meaning, look at how many years right now since Jesus was here. My friend, we are already in 2,000 years, almost ending 2,000 years of Jesus being here. So anytime, just see how soon we are to the coming of Jesus Christ. How soon? We are so much soon. And uh, <laughs> verse 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He's not slack. He doesn't lie. He, he, he's not just uh, telling us some fables there that, hey, I will come and he doesn't come. Listen, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to the repentance. The reason you're seeing God as if he's delaying is because he's just looking. I wish some more people could repent. I wish some more people could hear this. I wish some, I don't want to come earlier and so and so will miss heaven because there's no second chance. It is only one chance. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. Now, God is just looking and saying, if this chance is over and these people have not had, I don't care how much evil they are. I just want them to repent, just to repent and just come back to me. Because the Bible says that God does not rejoice in the death of a sinner. He does not rejoice in the death of a sinner. He did not rejoice if somebody is as bad as Hitler or is as bad as who when he's dying a sinner. God does not enjoy. He's the, he, he does not feel good because you're a sinner who has died. You see this kind of people tell you, oh, that guy deserved it. No, God does not say he deserved it. God is merciful. He looks and he says, this is someone who I created. I put all my effort for this person and yet he's going to hell, he does not rejoice. And he's just giving us more time so that at least some people can be saved, okay? And verse 10 says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief. So his day, he will come like a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. My friend, Jesus is coming very soon, absolutely so soon. And when you see these scoffers are talking this and they're saying this and they're saying this, know that it's just about time. It's really, really much about time. And uh, as I continue, and actually, if you're there, you can uh, kindly please share the video so that other people can be able to see. Uh, like I always say, I'm not after the views. I'm after people getting to hear the message. The more they hear, the more they can be changed, the more somebody can be able to hear something. So if you're in a position, please share to as many groups and many other different places so that others can also hear the message. Now, number six, another proof that we're in the last days is that there'll be a proclamation of peace and safety. People will start proclaiming and talking about peace and safety, peace and safety. People will be looking for peace and safety more than the way they look uh, for salvation and righteousness. Many people will not be talking about salvation. They'll be looking for peace and safety. Now, have you seen this one is really happening? Have you seen people are really now talking about peace, 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 safety, peace, safety? And even as they do their hustles, they say, I want to gather much more for myself so that I have safety for, you know, the days are coming ahead. Even right now, we see why did the leaders are talking about peace. We need peace and safety. Now, look at this. Look at this. First Thessalonians 5.3. It tells us exactly what will be happening in the last days. And when you look at this, you just say, for sure, these are the days. First Thessalonians 5, uh, 5 verses 3. Actually, let me start uh, uh, verse 1, 5 verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you. Look at what Paul is saying. <laughs> These last days, when Jesus is about to come, when the rapture is about to come, I don't even need to tell you. That is what Paul is saying. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You know very well that Jesus will come as a thief in the night. That one you have no dispute. And then he continues to explain. He says, for when they shall say, 
peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. When they'll just be saying peace and safety, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as a woman in travail, and they will not escape. How many messages have we had about peace and safety? Actually, last year, there was a big one where Trump was talking about peace and safety, peace in the Middle East, peace, uh, Israel, and uh, you know, um, the neighbors, we need peace here and peace here. Uh, you see China is trying to make peace with so-and-so, India is trying to make peace with this. You see uh, America is trying to make peace with these guys because they don't want to fight. Have you seen the way North Korea, is, North Korea and US, they are trying to say, can we, is there a way that these leaders can meet and make some peace because we don't want to, these people to fight. Let's, let's calm down, peace, 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 okay. The Bible tells us there will never be peace in the world until the Son of Man comes. So if you're waiting for peace from, from human beings, <laughs> there will never be peace. There will never absolutely be peace until Jesus Christ comes. He said with his own words <laughs> that uh, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. All right. When he came, he came to tell the, the world, hey, this is your problem. And after that, now, when he comes back, that's the only time that is going to give us peace. And even before that, before that, he will come with a sword, he will pin down, he will finish all the evil people and everyone will take the mark of the beast. They'll be finished and thrown to hell. So if you take the mark of the beast, if you're planning on taking the mark of the beast, <laughs> save yourself. When Jesus comes back, he's going to throw everyone who has taken the mark of the beast to hell. Absolutely. And even the first person will be thrown to the lake of fire you see, the, the, the beast, the false, um, the false prophet and the, uh, and the Antichrist, both of them will be thrown into the lake of fire. They are the first one who are going to open this lake of fire. You see, lake of fire and hell, they are two different things. The lake of fire is the eternal final point. Their judgment will have been done absolutely 100%. Okay, So they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. They'll be the first guys there. Even Satan will not taste there because Satan will be thrown in the bottomless pit when Jesus comes because he will be, you know, it will be opened again after a thousand years when Jesus comes to rule. So <laughs> the false prophet and the Antichrist will be the first ones in the lake of fire. But any other person who has taken the mark of the beast and everyone who is against Christ when Jesus comes back again, he'll be thrown into hell. And later on, after judgment, and uh, hell and uh, the everything else in it will be thrown into the lake of fire. It's like the hell. You see, hell is be beneath us. And I'll do a teaching about where uh, hell is located. Bible tells us absolutely so clear that hell is beneath us. It's down here on the ground. So hell and everything will be thrown into the lake of fire. I, I kind of think that... Um, the lake of fire is somewhere like it, it's an infinity kind of place is out of this earth, you know, things like that. So uh, the Bible tells us, Paul tells us that when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as a woman on travail and they shall not escape. And then Paul continues and tells us in verse four, but you brethren, you're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're not in darkness. Why are you thinking that you're in darkness? You're not in darkness. You are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. There are people who are sleeping right now. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Look at the gospel there again. Who died for our sins, so that when whether we wake or sleep, whether we are awake, Jesus comes when you're still awake, or we sleep, now meaning death, Okay. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now, Paul is so clear. He tells us we are not children of the darkness. We're, we're, we're not the confused fellows. We're not out there in the world. We have the spirit of truth in us. We have the Holy Spirit inside us, and he will teach us all things. So when the Holy Spirit tells you, this is the mark of the beast, stop looking at it like that. Stop doing this 
listen to him because he speaks slowly, a soft voice. The Holy, the Holy Spirit does not uh, force people into things. He does not force people into things. He speaks to you and he tells you this is the right way. And you can hear deep down in your spirit that this is the Holy Spirit trying to tell me, don't do this. So follow the spirit so that you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh, okay? And uh, when you see like what is happening, I, I always like to mention this because I see people are so much asleep. They are so much asleep. They are so blind. The people are not seeing. You see, the Bible tells us very well, and it says to us, if the, what, if the, the good man of the house knew when this, could have known when the thief could, uh, was coming, he could not have let his house to be broken into. So what is a house? Jesus lives in you. You are the body. Your body is the temple of Christ. So if your body is the temple of God, is the place where Christ dwells, then why would you let it to be broken into? Why could you let something foreign to just come and... <laughs> and you see people are waiting for... Uh, they are waiting for something big and some technology to come so that they can see the mark of the beast here and it's written mark of the beast. It's like M-O-B. And you'll be, oh, yeah, this is the mark of the... I'm not taking it. But Satan is a deceiver. Where technology is, the technology has really improved so much. It's so far. Technology is so far such that those huge things you're waiting on your hand or in your forehead, they are now coming through just a, a small syringe or something like that. So don't, 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 don't just focus on here. Focus on what the Bible says. That don't take anything which is going to destroy the temple of God. Read your Bible. Open up your eyes because, man, we're in the last days. We are absolutely in the last days. So people would be pro uh, proclaiming peace and safety in the last days. So that one already tells us mm -hmm, we are in the last days. Now, let's see number seven. Another point which uh, proves to us that we're in the last days. Men walking after their own lusts. Have you seen this one happening? People are walking after their own lusts. They don't want to hear anything about morals, about, you see, they don't want to hear anything about doing uh, what is right. They are all walking after their own lusts. They want to do what pleases them, what makes them happy, what makes them stars, superstars. They want to trend on Twitter, on Instagram. They want to, you know, they want to trend. They want to be like, I'm the talk of the town. And you have seen them, most of our Kenyan local celebrities, they are doing the same thing. You know, several of them who I'm talking about, they, they're just doing weird things. And then you ask, God gracious, what is wrong with the world today? People just, they, 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 are, they, are, they love themselves. They have some lust in themselves. They want to do what makes them, they don't care about morals anymore. They don't care about what is happening anymore. Are you seeing girls nowadays, they're, they're just uh, oh, out there. Remember the way it was back then that when somebody knows, uh, so someone knows that uh, so and so has done something evil, everybody will be like, What you mean that person did N nowadays? It's not like that. I've seen it girls, men confessing of how much immoral, how much the thieves they are, how much uh, bad they are, how much of drunkards they are, how much of everything they are, and now they are being celebrated for their lusts. Now, look at this. The book of Jude tells us about this, and it tells us it will exactly be like that in the end days. When you see this one happening, know that we're in the end times. The book of Jude 1.16, it tells us, uh, these are murmurous, people murmuring. These are murmurous, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Have you seen people like that? They are speaking big words. They're speaking great words. And they are, you know, they are hitting their chest and saying how big we are. You see, like I saw that, uh, you know who I'm talking about, this comedian in Kenya. And uh, he was telling people, he was telling actually the, uh, the, the, the CS, the, the CS for, it's called what? for film and all that he's telling him i'll pay you 750,000 just for me to you know uh, because you've marketed my dirty stuff by you know pricking me and telling me this is wrong the more you mention me the more my ratings go high the more you try to caution me because i'm trying to dirtify the society the more you're increasing my rating so i, I can give you 750,000 as a payment as, as long as you give me the invoice you see the way the way some people, they speak with a lot of pride, 
a lot of pride and you look and say, these are really great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. This person has some advantage. He has some money. He has a name, a big name. He has some good cars. He has some a big business. He has, he has some things that you can really say, wow, I admire if I was that guy. Look at all those girls in one place. Look at all that money in one place. Look at all those cars, big, big houses and people are admiring and they say, wow, this, I want to be like so-and-so. People are walking in their own lusts. They want, they want to tame and they want to confuse people to be like them because they are fallen and that they know their destiny and they know who they are working for. And they know exactly that I'm doing this against the morals that God has put in me. D don't look at these people and think that they don't know. They know. The Bible says very well that everything that God created is as an evidence to show that there is existence of God. There is existence. He can show you, I am here. I am here. I exist. And they know deep down in their conscience that there is a God. Even atheists who say, oh, there is no God, they're just pretending. They know absolutely 100%. And the reason they say there is no God is because they fear to be judged. They know their deeds are evil. They know they are, they, they are doing wrong things. And they know one day I'll be judged. So i rather deny if there's someone who is going to judge me. And no matter, no matter you, it doesn't matter if you... If you deny and you say there's no God, or you say whatever, or you say whatever, one day, the Bible says, one day, you're going to be judged. One day is coming. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to judge you for every simple thing that you did, because you'll not be judged in any other way. You'll be judged by your works. In the day, the great white throne judgment, you will stand there and you will explain, why did you post that thing on Facebook? Why? Tell us, do you know that one post that you posted on Facebook, it made so many people to, to fall into sin and to temptation. Do you remember why you posted that? God is going to ask you. God is going to ask you, remember that statement you made someplace where you had a chance of 10, 50, 15 people listening? You remember what you said? Do you know how many people were taken astray because of your words? God will judge you for everything that you're doing. He will judge you for every little thing that you're doing. You better stay right with him. Of course, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit is in you. He will guide you into doing what is right. You'll not even need to struggle and you'll not even need to hustle about all this. Let, let's continue. Verse 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember. Judy saying, remember the things which are spoken. How that they told you that there should be mockers, there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. All right. So in the last day, there'll be mockers, people mocking you. Anytime you say, you know, I believe that there is rapture. Ah, you're a fool. Which rapture? Who say there is rapture? Blah, blah, blah. There'll be mockers. Anytime you say, you see, Jesus is God. Which Jesus? Jesus did not say anywhere in the Bible that he's God. Come on. He has said so many times that he's God. He said that before Abraham was, I am. He said that there's a wide, wide, wide uh, um, uh, angle of uh, different, many, 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 many verses where Jesus says he's God. And you worship him as God. So you will see mockers. You will see them laughing, talking about their own things, and they're saying whatever. I don't know what they'll be saying, but don't be like them. Open up your eyes. Understand that we are living in the last days. People are walking after their own lusts because they want to show people how much advantage they have over everyone else. Number eight, another sign that we are living in the last days. Number eight, men will heap treasures for the last days. People will keep a lot of treasures for themselves for the last days. Have you seen people doing the same? Have you seen, uh, if you go on YouTube, you will see uh, billionaires creating bunkers for themselves, underground bunkers where they have already put uh, food which can take them 50 or 70 years without uh, you know ever working. Others are saying, we have created this for safety in case the apocalypse come, in case the zombies come, in case all these things uh, come. We are already prepared. We have some treasures. Our bank accounts are really full. Everything is so ready for us. 
We are so set. I don't think that uh, anything can scare us. We have uh, bulletproof cars. We have, uh, you know, uh, they're called what? Even if you, you throw a bomb into our bunkers, we are set. We have good houses. We have uh, security. And even the normal, uh, the, the normal, um, you know, uh, forget the billionaires and millionaires. The, the normal people, they're also heaping a lot of treasures for themselves. You know, for the last days, they're saying, uh, now for my retirement, in those days when I'm just about to die, I am, I'm putting a lot of treasure for myself so that when I retire in my last days, this is, it was spoken in the Bible. Have you ever heard in uh, 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 anywhere where the, the, the apostles were keeping treasures for themselves when they retire? No, this one has, the moment you hear this retire benefit, retire this and that, this is a sign that you're living in the end times. The Bible tells us that people will keep treasure for themselves for the last days. Let me read for you the verse before we even continue. People will heap themselves treasures for the last days, treasures for the last days. And they'll be saying, if I have this, my future is guaranteed. If I have these treasures, if I have NSSF, NHIF, you know, retirement benefits and all these things, I am safe. I am safe. I know I, I will die in peace. Come on. This has been spoken in the Bible. James 5.3. Look at what it says. James 5.3. Actually, let me start at James 5.1. Look at what it says. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and hold for your miseries that shall come upon you. <laughs> Jesus is saying, hey, you think you're rich? Weep now for your miseries that will come upon you. Miseries will come upon you, so many. Your riches are corrupted. Have you seen most of the people who are keeping a lot of riches for, the last, uh, for their last times? Most of those riches, there's always something fishy. There's always something that they have done. You know, I've stolen some money from my, my, uh, my job, from my employees. I've done this and that so that I can spare myself for the last day. I have stolen, I've been corrupt. Uh, if they are politicians, they have stolen from public funds. They have done this and that so that they can prepare their, you know, their end game out there. God is saying your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your garments, everything that you're putting on and you're saying my drawer my wardrobe is really full i have everything that i want jesus is saying your garments are moth eaten verse 3 uh, james 5 3 it says your gold and silver is conquered your gold and silver gold and silver is what money your money is conquered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. The rust of them, the way they will rust, the way that money of yours will even devalue, it will lose meaning. It will be a witness against you and you shall eat your flesh as it, as it were fire. You will eat yourself <laughs> because you love, you will be so much. <laughs> Let me show you. And you have heaped treasure together for the last days. You are heaping a lot of things for your last days. You are now stealing from people, being corrupt, doing evil stuff, heaping yourself uh, good treasures for the last days. But you don't know these sins that you're doing, they are just basically preparing you for the fire which is going to burn you which will be burning in hell with brimstone and brimstone and sulfur and you'll be eating your flesh in fire <laughs> you will shall eat your flesh as it were fire you see in hell you'll be eating your flesh trying to find water trying to find oh god gracious what am i going to do the bible is saying is telling you continue doing evil continue being corrupt continue doing all the things the bible says let him hear that is corrupt continue being corrupt let him hear that is righteous continue being righteous let him hear that is evil continue being evil but one day one day one day one day one day one time is going to come and you're going to cry and cry and ask, why did I have to do these things? Why was I running after world, worldly riches and the things and that the people that I destroyed their lives? How many people have stolen from others? And, and uh, uh, you like this con man, they steal from people. You hear somebody has conned another person 10 million shillings and is vanished in thin air. And that person has lost all everything that he had for his children and everything. And he has gotten into a depression and then he dies. Do you think God is happy with you? If you're a con man, do you think God is happy with you? If you're a thief, if you're a corrupt person, 
If you're a corrupt politician, if you're a bad leader, do you think God is happy with you? You're creating, you're saying, let me steal from the public. Let me steal from these people so that I can create my, you know, my end game there. When I retire, I live luxuriously. I'll go and buy a house at the beach and then relax and tell myself, oh, my heart now, relax. Now you have food to eat. You have water to drink. Remember the rich fool? What happened? He went and, uh, you know, he, 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 um, he shattered his uh, galleries and then he created new ones, big ones. And he said now he, he planted and he put everything there and he put a lot of food and water and he was really relaxed and all his granaries were full. And then he sat down and said, now I have set my treasures and I can eat the way I want and relax. Now my heart rejoice now because it's dead. now he's eating and relaxing what what did the angel tell that guy at night you're a big fool you're a big fool because tonight tonight your soul is wanted from you tonight 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 your soul is wanted from you you're a big fool you thought you will eat all these things exactly that's what the bible tells us and tells these kind of people who think because of being corrupt and stealing and doing all these things they are heaping themselves treasures for the last days okay so behold the hire of the laborers listen to what he's saying behold the hire of the laborers who have ripped down your fields which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. The people who are working for you, keeping your treasures and doing and doing deals for you and everything, everyone who was trying to help you, eh? you're oppressing people and telling them, give me everything that you've worked. Give me, your, 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 give me money through uh, taxes. And like I see, for example, Kenya, people are losing 2 billion Kenyan shillings every day from corruption, from corrupt politicians. They are stealing every day. So those people who are working, they are sweating, they are working hard. God is blessing the work of their hands, but still there are people who are stealing from them. Look what the Bible is saying. Behold, the hire of the laborers, the people you are stealing from, who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have ripped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. The cry of the people who we have stolen from is entering into the ears of God and he can hear. And one day, one time, it will happen to you. You have lived in pleasure on the earth. You have been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You've been, you've been fattening yourself like a, a lamb which is going on slaughter. You didn't know you're just fattening yourself with a lot of sins and so many things so that when you go into that hellfire, if you'll not repent, you'll be, you know, you just be drilling with, uh, I know, dripping with, uh, have you ever seen when, you, when, you, when you're roasting a lamb, when you're roasting some chicken and the way it's dripping with some oil, it's really fat, it's really burning so well. That is exactly what you're doing to yourself if you don't repent. You have condemned and killed the just and he does not resist you. Fine. The Bible is saying, be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the, for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. God is just telling you, hold on, it's okay. I'm waiting to get my bride. I'm waiting for my people to go in heaven. But what you're doing is going to cost you one day. So people who are heaping a lot of treasures for themselves, this is a sign of the end times. People will be doing this. They'll be so corrupt. They'll be so evil, trying to think that they can buy themselves the future. And now I'm secured. My future is straight. My everything is right. But the Bible did not tell us to heap treasures for ourselves in the last days. He told us that God provides for those who he loves. Even when they sleep, he provides for them. And he says that every day pray God and ask him for your daily bread. Because he knows, why do you think most people in like uh, places like Europe in, uh, in the US and places like that, most of them, they don't even, they don't even believe in God. It's because there's nothing to pray about. Yeah. I had one guy saying that, uh, why should I pray for my daily bread and my fridge is full? Why, why should I pray for this daily bread? My fridge is full. Everything is full. Well, why, why would I? They're just lying to themselves. 
because the Bible tells us these are signs of the last days. Don't be a part of uh, that, that uh, kind of problem. Now, number nine, another good example that we are living in the last days, another very, very uh, good sign that we're in the last days, it will be false preachers. Have you seen false preachers, false ministers? Have you seen them? The Bible tells us that uh, no, no marvel, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. No wonder even his ministers, they also, you know, they look as if they are ministers of righteousness, whom their end will be according to their works. So Satan has his ministers and he has his doctrine, which is called the de doctrine of, demon, uh, of demons. He creates something which is like the gospel, but is not the true gospel. You see, Paul tells us about these people who will bring another gospel, which is not really another gospel, but is a perversion of the gospel. Listen to what Paul say, says to us here in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Don't be removed from him who called you into the uh, grace of Christ and to another gospel. You see, there is another gospel in the church. Now, listen to what he's saying in verse 7, which is not another. It's not somebody who's telling you worship Satan or worship this or worship that. No, it's not really another gospel, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Have you seen people who are perverting the gospel of Christ? They're saying, this is how you can be saved. You can be saved like that. Just say these mantras. Just say these. Just uh, give to the poor. Come to the church every Sunday and you'll go to heaven. Just do this and this and this. They're, they're giving you another gospel, which seems almost like truth, but it's not really true. But though we are an angel from heaven, listen to what Paul is saying. But though we, Paul is including himself. He's saying, even if I come back again, and give you another gospel. By though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that that which you have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Paul is saying, don't listen to anybody who comes with another story. Even if it's me who comes again and tells you, no, I have another revelation. Even if it's an angel, oh, I dreamt last night and you know, there's this angel who showed me this. Have you seen these people who say, uh, an angel showed me this and this and this. We should always be very careful about those kind of things, about these people who say, I saw this and there was an angel who did this and he told me this and that. Always prove if it's not according to what the Bible is saying, then avoid it like plague. All right. Yes, if it's um, according to what the Bible says, because God does not contradict himself. He does not say you're saved by the blood, believing in the blood of Jesus Christ. And tomorrow he sends another angel to say, no, you're not saved by the blood. You're saved by saying the sinner's prayer, there's something really wrong. God does not say one thing in the Bible and then he reveals to someone something else. If he or she is saying something different, contrary to what the Bible says, then that is a liar. But if they say something which is exactly what the Bible is saying, then probably with a pinch of salt, you may believe them. I don't know. I don't want to give you a, a word on that. So false preachers will be there in the last days. Let's see, Matthew 24, verse 11. It tells us about these false preachers. Matthew 24, verse, uh, verse 11. It tells us, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets will rise and they will deceive so many people. People will be deceived because of what? Why will people be deceived? Because they never loved the truth. They loved fables. They loved lies. People are always running to churches where people will tell them a bunch of lies instead of a truth. Instead of telling them you're a sinner, a, 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 someone who if you don't repent, you're going to hell. They don't want to tell them that. They just tell them, oh, this is what you need to hear. You see, you're a good person. You see, like, like what I heard um, Joel Austin the other day saying, he was asked by Larry King uh, in an interview some time back, uh, do you believe that uh, I think Indians or Muslim will go to heaven? And he said, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure because you see, when I was with my father in India and he, he's always speaking some good, good stuff, you know, when I was with my father and I saw those people really love God and I'm not really sure if they're going to heaven or not. Come on, that's another gospel because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
So if they are believing in something else, they are believing in a cow, they are believing in all those demons that they always put in there in terms of, uh, uh, I don't know, Indians are here, they have almost uh, 40,000 different gods. I don't know, it's 40,000 or there are how many, so many of them. All those demons that they are putting there and they are, they are worshiping them, we don't worship the same God. For those who say we should unify and become one, you see the Catholic right now, they're trying to join all religions to be together. Like, come on, we are all children of Abraham. No, 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 no. The Bible says that you will be saved by believing in Jesus Christ only. Look at the Muslim world. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They say Jesus is not God. He's, he was just a man. He was a prophet, nothing else. They say, they deny absolutely. They say, no, Jesus is not God. And there's no way you'll deny Jesus and enter heaven. It's not possible. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So what they worship is another God, is a false God. What the Catholics, they worship is a different thing. All those uh, sculptures that you see. Have you ever entered a, a Catholic church and you think you're in a museum? You find there are idols from the gate to everywhere. If these people, it's like it's a museum. I'd rather not go to a museum than just, just go to Vatican and see. Have you ever seen the way those people and and you're and you're there asking yourself, oh, I think we worship the same God. Which God? God does not share glory. He does not share glory. Those people are worshiping, worshiping devils and idols, and that's why you should stay away from them. Because the Bible tells us about these false preachers who will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. The power is found where? There's power in the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The power is in the gospel. And what is that gospel? The gospel is all about how Jesus died for your sins. So if you're believing in these fellas, then uh, you're already deceived by the false preachers. Number 10, we have another clue that we're in the last days. Another clue is disobedience to parents. We will see so many people are really disobedient to parents uh, so much. Uh, people are just all rude. Have you seen kids who, who are really rude? They're, they're beating each other. They are, they are, even others are abusing their parents. They are, they are killing their parents. They're, People, this, is, this was unlike back in the days. It's unlike back in the days. Nowadays, you see children and you ask, is this a child of someone? Have you gone to YouTube and then you just see, just go and type, uh, you know, child beating mother or beating father or something. You will see some crazy stuff until you'll be like, oops, I don't want to see this. Man, we're in the last days. The Bible tells us about this. And actually, this one is all brought by the fallen education system. This education beast system that we are having in a form of education system is just a beast system. They have known how to manipulate people's minds from when they are really young. You see the way uh, Islam and the Catholics, they do? When a child is still young, they take them to those madrasas and those catechism, and they try, they start brainwashing the child as he, he or she grows. They brainwash that person. By the time he's a... He's a is uh, an adult, he cannot think for himself. He has been brainwashed. He thinks that Islam or Catholic or whatever other thing is, is the God and there is no other thing because of brainwashing. The same thing happens with the education system. You are brainwashed from when you're a child. All through you're being taught irrelevant things, how to dissect grasshoppers, how to do some useless kind of things. You are brainwashed all through, all through, all through, and how to listen and how to, you should not even argue a point. If they teach you A for apple, B for boy, they don't even give you a chance to even think for yourself. They don't even give you a chance to say A for antelope or for ant or for something. They don't want you to have a broad mind. Everything is choices. You're given choice A or B, choice B or C. It's everything is planned. They don't want you to open your eyes. And the people who graduate from this deception, they are given, you know, degrees and masters. I call them masters of deception. They are deceived like nothing else. Have you realized most of these people really passed so much in school? They are working for those who did not even go to school. Have you realized that? Because those who did not even go to school or who dropped out, they know they have come out from this system and they understand that this is all foolishness. They, they are teaching people deception and they are brainwashing you all through. When, when I was young, 
my mother used to tell me that God created me. I was created by God. And I knew that until when I go to school. When I go to school, I see another teacher trying to tell me, no, you evolved from a monkey. No, but the Bible tells me I was created by God. No, 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 you are from a monkey. Believe it. If you don't believe it, you'll go home. We will be suspended. You see? This is the kind of crap that they teach in school. And they, they make the kids to be disobedient to parents. And instead of saying the truth, they, they, they make you to be another fellow who, who is just confused. Why are they pushing the agenda on um, women empowerment? Have you ever asked yourself why so much women empowerment, empower women, empower women? So that they can get hold of their children. The moment that this woman is empowered, she has a good job, she has this and that, and now she's in, in, as a CEO somewhere. Where are the children? Where are the children of this mama? Where are they? Where are they? They are with a house girl, they're in a kindergarten somewhere, being indoctrinated by the same things. Go, remember the days when you used to sit down with your parents. And you used to discuss, and your mother could teach you this and that. They could teach the girls how to cook, the boys how to do, uh, you know, uh, to be good husbands, they to, to do great things to the community. Nowadays, the children are being raised by the state. They are being raised by the state. And they are raised by these wicked people who are giving them wicked ideas and telling them that there is no God. They're telling them that all these stupid things that they're telling them, thinking, and you, you're there thinking, oh, let's empower women. And no wonder they are changing the women to be above men and the men to be down. And what, what does that cost? We are having men who are looking like women. LGBT is flowing like no, no man's business. There are no men nowadays. <laughs> men, I don't know where are men nowadays. Men have just turned to be like a museum. It is no more there because Men have no jobs. All jobs are being given to women. I'm not here after saying who is better or what. I'm just after aligning the way God created things to be. Man is supposed to be the provider. The woman should be the helper. She should help the man to succeed in different things. And then these two are one. They help each other. But nowadays, the, the, the playing field has been made like this and actually is going more to the women. So if they are not just for men and the man is only supposed to stay in the house with the kids, and then the woman working. So who is the wife here? Are you seeing the? Are you seeing how LGBT is coming up? These people are just pushing satanic things, and they are making people to be disobedient. And this is some of the signs of what you've been told that the end times will look like. So let's go to this verse, Second Timothy three. Second Timothy, uh, three one to two, it says. Know this also, this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. In the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. It's written there. Unthankful, unholy. Now, you have seen people will be disobedient to parents so much because of the system. The system the system is teaching people something else. Back in the days when there was not this education, big, big system of nothing, people were awake. People knew their rights. People knew what is right and what is wrong because God had put them this message in their hearts. They knew I should not... Uh, I, 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 I should not do something wrong. I should not steal because God has written his laws in us. We understand from a little child until when you, was, you started being taught these things is the time you start realizing, oh, so I have my rights. Before you knew your father, you should respect him. Nowadays, a child can tell a father, hey, you know, I know my rights. I can take you to the police. I can do this and that. When you beat a child, what happens? The police are coming with grenades and everything. They want to bomb you up because you just slapped your child. And the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. Are you seeing the picture? Because this world system is all after spoiling everything. And these people, I don't know what to say. It's a whole big fat lie. And if you're still there running after their system and thinking that they are helping you, man, you're lost as a golf ball on high wheat. Uh, number 11, let's see what's another uh, uh, clue that we're living in the last days. There'll be increase in knowledge and travel. Increase in knowledge and travel. People will travel so much and people will be really wise. <laughs> this one has been spoken in the book of Daniel. Let me show you in the book of Daniel. 
the Bible has said there'll be a lot of knowledge. Daniel 12, uh, verse 4. Daniel 12, verse uh, 4, it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even unto the time of the end. The time of the end. Seal up the book to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. People will be running to and fro. Today I'm in South Africa. Tomorrow I'm in Europe. To the other day I'm in China. The other day I'm... people will be running to and fro because knowledge will increase. This one is already spoken in the Bible. And you can see it very well. You can see it very well. How many technologies do we have right now? People are going to the moon. The other day I heard that people have gone to, even to the mass. <laughs> people are now going to mass. Knowledge has increased so much. Technology has come to a point whereby you cannot really understand where we're heading. If Jesus does not come very soon and we stay maybe up to 2025, 20, 20, uh, 30 or something, I think Jesus will come and find we are all robots or something. Because where technology is going, Neuralink, look at all these things that they're, 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 they're doing nowadays. They can mix up your brain and mix up this and mix up different things. And you look like this and you just say, wow. Wow, technology is really far. And they are saying right now, you can uh, very soon, I think uh, Elon Musk, if I'm not wrong, he's saying that uh, you'll have to pay about $6 billion to go, you know, a private tour to the moon. If you want to go to the moon, a private tour will cost you about $6 billion. For private people, like I can just wake up and say, I have some $6 billion. I want to go and just check the moon, how it looks like, you know, yeah, tourism. Is that not technology? Could we, did we see this one in the years behind? No. Look at uh, aircrafts now. Look at trains. Look at cars. Look at tes Tesla, car, a car driving itself. Think about someone who died in the year 1990. And then he, he wakes up now and he finds someone sitting on a Tesla car. And that Tesla is, uh, you know, that, that car is driving this person and, and he's at the back seat and there's no driver. You'll think, man, these are ghosts driving this car. But technology, knowledge has increased so much, showing us that we are in the last of the last days because the Bible told us that knowledge will increase. It will be so much that you'll not be able to understand. Look at what is happening right now in the world. I don't want to mention that name. Let me just say the plague happening right now because this is a plague. Look at what is happening. People are waiting for these injections. And when you will get them, what is going to happen? There's a possibility that they'll make you something different. They'll make you another thing that you cannot be able to explain. <laughs> You'll not even be a human being. You'll be another, you know, it's like an mixing alien and human beings. You remember in the times of Noah, what happened? Yeah, the fallen angels they mixed with the with the daughters of mankind, and uh, they created another. What do we call it? They created another species which cannot be explained. And God was so angry, and He said, "I created you, human beings, and you decided to create your own species, which is of fallen angels mixed with human beings, and they created giants." And God was so agitated, and He finished everyone with water, with flood. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the times of the end. Are you seeing the same happening? The way it was in the times of Noah, now the same thing is happening. People want to change themselves and they become something different. They want to become, they want to get uh, the image of Satan. Have you, do you know there's something called Lucifer? Lucifer is? I don't want to say these words because these guys might, uh, they, they might start censoring my video. But Go and look for that Lucifer is. It's, 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 it's just, it's something that I cannot even explain. When you get that, you know, that thing immediately in your hand, there's some, some light, some light, which, which is called, the one which is called Lucifer is. It's the light which is going to be seen using a small gadget here, a gadget. People can be able to see. They can see with that gadget. If you've gotten, you know, that thing. And uh, if that is the light which is being produced and it's called Lucifer is, who is this Lucifer? Oh, there's only one guy who pretends to be the angel of light. The angel of light. Are you seeing this? And the Bible tells us very well in the book of Revelation. Look at this. Revelation chapter 13. Chapter 13. Huh? Chapter 13, verse 17. Listen. You want that Lucifer is? 
Okay, look at this, chapter seven, uh, 13, verse 17. And that no man, okay, let's start from verse 16. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that has the mark, he that has the mark, you either have the mark, okay, or the name of the beast. Who is the beast? Lucifer. You have his name, the name of the beast, and then you think, oh, it can never be the mark of the beast. You see, we have prayed for these drugs, we have prayed for them. Keep on saying you have prayed for them. The name of the beast or the number of his name. The number of his name. Have you seen the patent number for this thing? This thing that you're being given is 060606. What's that? 666. Do your math. Knowledge has increased. Things are turning haywire. So let me ask you. So how should we get ready for Christ's coming? Since now we have understood, really, we are in the last days. So how can we get ready how can we how can we know i've seen so many people writing uh, to me in inbox and others on uh, whatsapp they're writing to me and asking me kid these things are really happening the way the way we are seeing things right now what are we going to do i'm so scared i don't know should i hide myself should i do what the bible tells us <laughs> very simple thing that we should do before even i come to the main thing let me tell you one thing the bible tells us do not fear he that can destroy the body alone. Fear only one who can destroy both uh, the body and soul in hell, who is God. Do not fear these fellas who are telling you that I, I'll, I'll finish you, I'll make you not eat, I will destroy you, I will shoot you. Let them shoot you. Let them do everything. They'll be doing you a favor, actually. You'll be out of this uh, fake world. Because the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with God. If you're a believer, so don't fear these people who say that they will destroy your body. No, fear only one who can destroy your, both your body and soul in hell. Because the Bible tells us, whosoever will save his life, he will lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for me, he will gain it. Now, how can you save your life and lose it? There are those people who say, ah, oh, please, I trust this scientist, please, this scientist, I want to save my life, please give me this thing, give me this Lucifer thing. I want to save my life. And Jesus told you, don't do this. You're thinking you're saving your life, but you will lose it. You will go to hell. You'll not be redeemable anyway. You'll never, ever be redeemable. Because one thing, when you get this thing, there's a lot of research everywhere. When you get this thing, it changes the way you think. You cannot think straight. It's like, it's like these people are thinking for you. It's like you have, they are controlling you on a computer. You cannot think. You can't think. You don't understand what you're, you're doing. I saw one somebody, uh, uh, some other lady, uh, I think it was on, on Facebook. She was saying, my dad took this thing. And after that, everything that he believed on, everything that you always stood for, it's like it never made sense to him. He is speaking, he's eating, he's talking, but he's become a different human being. It's like something is controlling him. Are you seeing why the Bible was saying that when you take the mark of the beast, you'll not be able to repent because you'll not have your mind. You'll be off. It's like you're, you're something else. You're a robot. So the Bible tells us, whosoever you want to save his life, he will lose it. You want to save your life so much, you're going to lose it. You want to, uh, you want to lose your life for the sake of Christ, you will gain it. Because if you say, no, I'd rather die in the bush. I'd rather go to the bush. I'd rather be eaten by snakes and animals and die there, then pick this thing. Then because you did not love your life, then God is going to give you eternal life. And this is forever and ever and ever. All right. Now, before even you come to that, because a lot of uh, stuff, a lot of pushing on this will come during the time of tribulation. Right now, we're just seeing, you know, the first, first pictures. We're just seeing, the, is, is that the introduction of the movie? What you're seeing right now in the world? This is the introduction. The Bible tells us, unless you believe the gospel, unless you're saved, you'll never be able to enter the kingdom. You will not be able to, you, it's, you don't know Jesus. Unless you're saved, there's no way you can save yourself from this. You will take that thing, they'll convince you, they'll mix your head, and at the end of the day, you'll find yourself in hell. So the only way you can save yourself is by believing the gospel, getting saved. Why? Because the Bible tells us, 
unless you're saved, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. So how can we get saved? How can we save ourselves? How can we be able to say, this is it. I know it's the last days. I know everything is coming and I don't care what and what and what. I just want to be secure. How can you be secure? It is by a simple, simple thing, a simple way. In the book of Ephesians 1.13, the Bible says, in whom you trusted, in whom you trusted after that you had the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, in whom you believed you were sealed with that uh, Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of our inheritance unto the praise of his glory. So after yet you had, you had something, you had the gospel of your salvation. And after you had, you analyzed it, you understood it, and then you believed that gospel. Immediately after that, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the honest? Who is the assurance? Who is the security of you getting your inheritance in heaven? Of you entering in heaven? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will never see heaven. Why? Because the same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus from the grave is the one who is going to quicken your body, is the one who is going to change this mortal body of yours and then you fly up in heaven. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, don't lie to yourself if you're going anywhere. If you can, if, uh, if, the things of God do not really interest you if you all of a sudden you're always like, ah, I hate doing things of God. I hate reading the Bible. I don't like this. There's a big possibility you don't have the Holy Spirit. You may be going to church every day. You may be doing all the good things in church every day, but probably high possibility you're not saved. If you find yourself, you're doubting, am I really saved? Am I really saved all the time? There's a high possibility you're not. Why? Because when you're saved, the Holy Spirit testifies to your spirit that you're a child of God. The Holy Spirit tells you, hey, Keith, you know what? You're a child of God. Don't worry about what is coming. Don't worry about anything. You're going to heaven. You're saved. Now, how can you hear what is that gospel of your salvation which saves you? And how can you be able to get it? How can you apply it to yourself? Now, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. This is Paul telling what he's declaring, the gospel, which I preached unto you, he preached before, which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand. So you, you had this gospel, you received and you stand in the gospel. And he says, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Now, Paul is saying, this gospel is the one which saves you. If you keep it in memory, how do you keep something in memory? By understanding it. How do you keep a formula in memory? By understanding it, not cramming it. Unless you understand the gospel, you can never be saved. So if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now Paul is saying, if you understand how Christ died for your sins, how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Why did he have to shed his blood? Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission or there is no forgiveness of sins. Why does the, uh, uh, do we have to have shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins? Because the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. So when the blood is shed, then the life of that creature comes out. So unless you, you shed your blood or someone else sheds his blood for you, there can never be forgiveness. So why, why is it that blood has to be shed? And why, why all this story about the blood? It is because God has his rule. He said, whosoever will sin, whosoever will do any sin, 
he must die. And God is just. He does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when mankind, through Adam, he sinned, when he did something wrong, he ate from that forbidden fruit. He died. Spiritually, he died. He did not die physically, but spiritually he died. The spirit in him died. So he could not be accepted by God. So he had, at one point, one time, his blood has to be shed and then he's completely dead. But God did something because he's a God of mercy. He said, I have to find a way to make sure that this person will not die forever. Because I am just, now this is God, because I am just and I cannot change. The Bible says God is not man that he should repent, that he should change his mind. God is not man. He does not change. He said that whosoever will sin, he must die because he does not say where they sin. So God, he, he can only show love through justice. If God could have woken up and said, okay, Adam and Eve, it's okay, you've done it. Let me just, it's okay, let, let me just forgive you. He would be a corrupt God. But God being just, he has to show the truth. If somebody kills another one, there must be justice. If somebody sins, there must be justice. So the only way where justice could have happened so that God could show love was through this person, who is Adam and his seed, because we are from the seed of Adam, uh, Genesis 5.3. We are from the seed of Adam. We were supposed to die. But God in his throne, he sat down and he said, I've created these people and I really love them so much. What am I going to do? Because I've already set this rule and I cannot go against this rule. And he said, I want to send my only son, Jesus, who is blameless, guiltless, has no sin to come and die for your sake so that whosoever will believe that that death of Jesus is his, he will be saved. So Jesus comes and he shed his blood at the cross. He shed his blood, his blood was shed and every drop of his blood was shed out. That could have been your blood being shed out because you're a sinner and you did everything wrong. But he shed his blood, his blood was shed, and then he said, it is finished. What was finished? The payment of sin was finished at the cross. He finished everything. He, he cleared the debt. Now, what is expected of us? Just he expects us to believe that what Jesus did, he did for us. And we believe and you put it in yourself. And after you believe, you even confess and say, Jesus, I know you died for my sins. You died. This death was supposed to be mine, but you shed your blood for me. And I trust that blood which was shed because that is the blood which has cleansed me from all my sins. And when you do this, because the Bible says in Romans 3.25 that in whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. He says that, Faith in his blood is what he calls for. He calls for you to have faith in what he did for you. That blood which was shed for you. Believe that it was for you and you will be saved. And also in uh, Ephesians 1 verse 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through uh, his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption through uh, through his blood. So his blood redeems us. So once you understand that concept and why Jesus had to die for our sins, he had to be buried and rise again. Once you understand and you accept that he died for you and that blood which was shed was for you, then my friend, you are saved. And all that you need to do is just to tell God what you have accepted. That God, I accept I have accepted that through the blood that you've shed, I am saved. You shed that blood for me and I accept that. And I thank you for saving me. And from today, I'm a different person. And once you do that, absolutely, <laughs> there's nothing else you need to do. And it's not the prayer which saves you. The prayer does not save you. What saves you is the believing. Because if a prayer could save you, if words could save you, then the deaf and the dumb people could all go to hell. 
but it is through believing in the heart. After you have understood what Jesus has done for you, that is the only time that you can be able to be saved. Once you do this and you understand, my friend, you're saved and you're safe. And even if Jesus comes after you have just cleared believing, my friend, even if you are the most evil person, you have done everything wrong, when Jesus comes and you have just believed, my friend, you're going straight to heaven. There's no worry, no doubt about that because God does not lie. And what he has said is true. He has said that you will go to heaven if you're saved and if you have believed in him. That's why the Bible says, whosoever believes in him, remember John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anyone, whosoever means anyone, whosoever believes in him, believes that that son who was given out there to be killed and die, if whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So you see, it's so simple, salvation. All these other things that people say, just say this prayer and you're saved. Just do this and you're saved. Just be baptized and you're saved. Just do this and that. Give to the poor, give to the needy, come to church and you're saved. The church saves you. All those are lies. The Bible is very clear. It's all about believing believing in him and once you believe in jesus christ the holy spirit comes inside you and he teaches you all things he teaches you walk good things stop doing the wrong things he cleans you up from a baby christian someone who is always sinning someone who is always doing wrong things wrong thoughts he starts perfecting you into his righteousness. And by the time you realize you become so deep into the word of God, you become so great and so clean until you don't even realize if it's you. You start seeing, wow, is it me who is preaching like this? I never thought in my life I could preach to people. I always thought, what? Hey, this is the hardest thing. I don't even know where to start with the Bible. The Bible was so hard for me. But the moment the Holy Spirit came inside me, the moment I got saved, the moment <laughs> It changed. It, it was like a bulb which just opened up my mind. And all of a sudden, I started seeing the world in a different way and seeing things in a different way. And God, he will keep your salvation. The Bible says he is able to keep you. In the book of Jude, all right? The book of Jude, uh, ch chapter 1, verse 24, he says, Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless and they are faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, God is the one who keeps our salvation. We don't keep our salvation. So you can never lose your salvation. The moment you're believed from your heart, you can never lose your salvation. God will keep that salvation and he will present you blameless on that day. And as people are going to heaven, you'll be there shouting and rejoicing and saying, wow, finally I made it. So don't worry about all these things and what is happening and everything. And of course, after you've been saved, something else that you need also to put in focus. And uh, uh, it's, it's um, what we see in 1 John 2.28. Let me show you. Remain in fellowship with Christ. Now, this one does not mean that you can lose your salvation. No, it means keep on pushing yourself to doing what is right, doing the things of God. And he will start increasing you in knowledge and in these things because the bible says do not quench the holy spirit quenching is like you put a lot of water in some juice and it's there yes there's a juice but it's so quenched it doesn't mean the holy spirit is not there but when you keep on doing wrong things you're quenching the holy spirit until now you cannot even hear his voice and he cannot warn you on some things like what we have we are seeing happening in the world so the bible says in first john 2 28 it says, it says that, and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, okay, abide in him, stick, stick with the gospel, stick in Christ, do things of God, so that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Just think about it when Jesus has come and then he finds you, you know, you're, you're, you're with drunkards, you're so drunk, you're fallen, you're, you're in promiscuous stuff, you're beating your friends, you're doing wrong things, and he comes, yes, fine, you will go to heaven, but think about that shame. <laughs> he has come, he has found you at the middle of iniquity, and the Bible says, if you're named after Christ, please depart from iniquity. So Bible is telling us, please, please. 
because in verse 29 if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone does that does righteousness is born of him you're born of him you're created in his image you are now a new creature once you're a new creature don't walk like the old creature don't walk in the times the way you used to walk and also if you find people and they want to know about the gospel teach them tell them what what has happened to you tell them about the gospel tell them that jesus saves you never know who he'll be helping out because the bible tells us also in the book of first peter it tells us about this first peter 3 15 mm, first peter 3 15 it tells us but sanctify the lord god in your hearts sanctify the lord god in, in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. So anyone who asks you, hey, my brother, why are you saved? Come on, why are you so happy? Why, 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 are, you, why are you so relaxed? Why do you have peace and there's a crisis? You tell them, hey, you see why I have uh, peace? It's because I have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is peace, joy, long suffering, you know, all those kind of things. And I have this because I am saved and Jesus saved me. And you also, you can be saved. You see, that's how simple the gospel is. And that's how you can escape all this problem, which is about to come because the world is about to end. We are, we are not even, we are not even in the last days. We're not even in the last hours. We're not even in the last minutes of, we are in the last seconds before Jesus comes back. You may hear these videos two, three, four, five times, or maybe once or whatever. And the next day you ask and you say, what? This guy used to preach to us on Facebook. He used to preach to us on YouTube. And now we are left here. And remember, if you're left after the rapture, the gospel in the time of tribulation will be a different one. It will not be believe in Jesus, he died for you. No, that will be done. Even if you believe in Jesus, he died for you, that will not save you. Now it will be another different gospel, which is called the everlasting gospel. You'll have to make sure that you don't take the mark of the beast and that you trust that Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews. And that's the only way you'll be able to be saved. So this is a different gospel. Right now we are in the time of grace. We are saved by grace right now. Grace, there's nothing that you need to do to be saved. For by faith you're saved. Through, for by grace you're saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, all right? Not of works that anyone should boast, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Right now, it is a gift. It is free gift. Jesus died for you. He did all the work. Believe. When the rapture happens like this, when you just wake up one day and you go on YouTube and you look or Facebook and you ask, where is this Keith guy who was always uh, telling us about, you know, Mark of the Beast, Jesus is coming. And, and all of a sudden, he's not updating. And the other similar like, uh, similar minded people they are not there you're not seeing them you're not hearing from them my friend that day you just know Kimeumana. and that is the time that you'll understand that if only i could have been saved before because now gospel will be a different one and you'll have to save yourself with your own blood you'll have to have your head cut off you'll be the tribulation saints and if you pick the mark of the beast you'll be going to hell in the next three years or something or less or seven, less than seven years will be going to hell so what's the need you rather cut off your head go tell them where's the line for those who believe in jesus here they are cutting heads guillotine cut mine at least you go to heaven so guys hope it's been a blessing you can share this video to other people let them hear it's not about the views but it's about trying to see if people can be able to be saved please Say, be saved if you have not been saved. God bless you. Have a blessed time. See you on Monday, God willing. Same time, same place. See ya.